Aspen Institute Socrates program came to New Orleans to hold a Socrates Salon. Vivanola spoke with some of the leaders that came to participate and to guide this program. And let's hear what they had to say about what took place in New Orleans. First of all, the Aspen Institute is one of the world's most renowned think tanks and it brings together people from all over the world who are really looking at some of society's greatest problems. And to have that here in New Orleans continues to prove that New Orleans is a place where people come to think. They can come and have a great time, but we're a place in a city of thinkers and very smart people. The Aspen Institute was started 70 years ago, Renee, at the uh, wake of World War II, and it was created by philanthropists who wanted to prevent a World War III. And so Socrates is an uh, education forum for emerging leaders, where we introduce them to values and ethics-based Socratic dialogue on contemporary topics. And the people that we seek to attract are between the ages of, say, 30 and 50. So imagine being in a room of 25 people, closed doors, Socratic method, Chatham House rules, and you're in the room with the former Secretary of State. That's, that's the situation we're trying to create 20 times a year all over the world. We're in South America, we're in Mexico, Japan. Yeah, I think these kinds of panels are critically important in our local communities. We live in a time of tremendous change, and that change wrought on by technology affects the future of work, it affects how we think about learning, it affects even how we civically engage. And so each local community across the country is going to have to really wrap their arms around and their minds around what that change looks like and how they want to respond to it. I mean, we've had a lot of growth in this city over the last 13, 14 years, but people still have been left behind, people of color, particularly folks in the Latino and African American community. We have to make sure that this technology advancement allows them to participate well. So that means and it's important for workforce training. But the biggest thing that I can say is in, in whenever you have investment in people and time in your city, that's a win. We just have to make sure that winning extends to all members of our city. Even low income folks have mobile phones and they use social networks. So how we communicate how we engage, even what we read, often is influenced by technology. And so part of the question for tonight is, how do we take advantage of that to really provide access to everyone? How does change impact a place that, that has such a, a emotional, spiritual pull on its inhabitants? Can that same pull push you into the future? in a world where, where you're not known just for music, but you're known for also for innovation. I just think that New Orleans has an extraordinary opportunity to be a leader in the world on really engaging next generation and first immigrant families and communities and really engaging in the future of their work lives. And I'm really looking forward to the conversation tonight.